Hello and welcome to this Dr Ross Maths key skill video on finding an equation of a line perpendicular to another. Well what do we mean by perpendicular? Let's just say that we had a line. Now remember that the gradient of a line means how steep it is. More specifically it means that each time x increases by 1, we go right 1, what is the y value changing by? So let's just say that the y value is increasing by 2 each time. So this would have a gradient of 2. And remember, gradient we denote by the letter M. Now, if we had a line that was perpendicular to that, it means it's at right angles to the other line. So this would be a perpendicular line. Perpendicular means at right angles. Well, what do we know about the gradient of this particular line? Well, we first note that it's negative because it's going downhill. If a gradient if a line is going downhill, it's going to have a negative gradient because each time x increases by 1, the y value is actually decreasing. Now, by a sort of rotational symmetry type argument, can you see that if x increases by 2, the y value is going to go down by 1? And that's because, look, if you rotate this triangle round, if you rotate it round, you get this. You can see x value is increasing by 2, the y value is going down by 1. Now, if for each time the x increases by 2, the y decreases by 1, that means that each time the x value increases by 1, the y value is going to go down by half. So that means the gradient of this perpendicular line is going to be negative half. Now, if you don't understand that, don't worry. There's a very simple way to work out the gradient of a perpendicular line. And it's basically this. Find the negative reciprocal, and I'll explain what I mean by that in a second, for the gradient of a line perpendicular to another. So let's give some examples. If the gradient of the original line was 2, then what would be the gradient of the line perpendicular to it? I'm just going to use this symbol to mean perpendicular to. Well, negative reciprocal means, well, we first do negative that, so the 2 becomes minus 2, negative that. And reciprocal means 1 over. So reciprocal of a number means 1 over it. So we do 1 over negative 2. So we first turn the 2 into minus 2, the negative of it. And then we do the reciprocal of that, means 1 over it. And rather than 1 over minus 2, I like to write the minus on the front, so it would be negative a half. What about if the gradient was uh, minus 3? Well, we first do the negative of that. Well, negative of negative 3 is positive 3. And then we do reciprocal of that, 1 over it. So the 3 gets flipped, you do 1 over it, and the negative becomes positive. And if it was positive, it becomes negative. What about if I had a quarter? Well, positive becomes negative, because we're doing the negative of it. And if I want the reciprocal of that, well, when you do the reciprocal of a fraction, when you do 1 over a fraction, it actually flips it upside down. So the 1 over 4 becomes 4 over 1. And 4 divided by 1 is just 4. So a quarter would become minus 4. And finally, if we had, say, negative 2 thirds, well, we said that negative becomes positive if you're finding the gradient of a perpendicular line. So it becomes positive. And doing the reciprocal of a fraction flips it upside down. We get 3 over 2. Now, let's apply that principle to this problem here. Find the equation of the line perpendicular to y equals 2x plus 1. So if the gradient of the original line was 2, the number in front of the x, then the gradient of the perpendicular line, I think this notation is quite helpful, is going to be the negative reciprocal of that. So we do negative of that, so minus 2 and 1 over that, that's become minus half, just like I've got in this table. And now we also know that it goes through the point 6, 4. So we want an equation of a line which goes through 6, 4 and has gradient minus half. Now in a previous video, we saw how to solve a problem like this. All we do is we write y equals mx plus c and we substitute our known gradient and our known point into that equation to work out what the y-intercept is, the c. So that's the x value, that's the y value of our known point. The y value is 4, sub that in. The m is negative a half. And mx just means m times x, so it's going to be times by the x value of that point, which is 6. And then plus c, let's simplify that. Well, 
If you ignore that minus at the moment, what's half times six? That's another way of saying half of six, which is three. And because that's negative, it's going to be minus three, because negative times positive is negative. And then if we were to do it in our head, well, minus three plus what is four? Well, minus three plus seven is four. So C is seven. And that means we've got the equation in our straight line. If Y equals MX plus C, then Y equals M, which is minus half, so minus half X plus C. We worked out the C was seven. And that is the equation of our straight line. That is the final answer. Remember, when you have an equation of a straight line, it should have a variable x and a variable y in it.